uh, what we are going to do today, okay, uh, this is another discussion for the application of MFRS 138, Intangible Asset, and we are going to discuss question February, uh, March, sorry, May 2022. This is a common test. And I have highlighted the information in this question. I believe you have read this question. I have highlighted the information in this question relating to acquisition of a computer software that was acquired by a company, Woody Woods and Yamrahat, and all the uh, highlighter that I use here is yellow for the acquisition of software and the information related to it. So the information tells that the company uses the revaluation re model. And the year end of the company is 31st December 2020. The company has the detail of the computer software to be 50,000. Estimated useful life is five years. So you are asked to exp uh, list the choice of subsequent measurement. So what are the two subsequent measurement that you have? Cost what? model, the narrow model. Okay. All right, very good. Cost model and revaluation model. So cost model and revaluation model. So let us just see this uh, part here. Uh, the you just need to write that uh, and you get the full mark for that part. So you have to write cost model and revaluation model. The next one. Next one, we go to the next part, which is explain the accounting treatment for the computer software for the year ended 31st of December 2020, which means you are going to explain from 1st of January 2020 until 31st of December 2020. Right. So you, meaning that you are going to explain what is the carrying amount here, how much you are going to explain the subsequent measurement because you are not going to explain initial measurement. Initial measurement is in 20, uh, when was it purchased? So 2019. So you are not going to explain about initial measurement. You will explain on subsequent measurement what is the information on the amount on 1st of January 2020 and you will again explain subsequent measurement here and you are going to explain subsequent measurement revaluation model and under revaluation model it should be at revalued amount minus subsequent accumulated amortization minus subsequent accumulated impairment loss however in our question no impairment loss so we are going to explain amortization. We are going to explain uh, what is the uh, difference between the fair value here with the carrying amount, whether there is a surplus or deficit. And we are going to explain the accounting treatment relating to the revaluation model. All right. So um, you have that was number two. So let's do that here. So you can see that I start with the carrying amount. So the carrying amount. CA is short form, right in full. So first start with the carrying amount of the software as at 1st of January because you explain from 1st of January how much? 40,000. How do you get 40,000? So take note that the software just now was 50,000. The cost of the software, the cost on the date of acquisition. So accumulated amortization as at 31st of December, 31st of December 20 would be 50,000 divided by five years. So you will have 10. Therefore, 40,000 is your carrying amount. On 1st of January, this is 2019, yeah, sorry, 2019. Um, uh, 1st of January 2020, the carrying amount is 40,000 because the, in the previous year, there was already an amortization. So that's how you get 40,000. Now you, may, you will go uh, and explain again the same amortization 
expenses that was charged in 2020. So you have to mention since the intangible asset has a finite useful life of five years, amortization expenses of 10,000 show the working is charged to the SOPL. So you have to mention that it was an expenses. And then you also need to mention on the carrying amount of the computer software on 31st of December. So accumulated amortization will be done again here, another 10,000. And therefore carrying amount on 31st of December 2020 would be 30,000. Right, 30,000. Uh, and then you have the information on revaluation re model. So the revaluation re model is given where? Okay, I just write that back. Okay, so I want you to look at the question. Look at the question. Here you have the fair value on 31st of December 2020. You need to compare this fair value with the carrying value that we just calculated just now because the company adopts revaluation re model. So you have to incorporate if there is a surplus or a deficit. So if you have done that, let's say you put the fair value here and the amount is 34. So now you have a revaluation re surplus. This is first revaluation re first revaluation re and that revaluation re surplus was 4000 so the treatment of revaluation re surplus under the uh, intangible asset mfrs 138 is similar to mfrs 116 ppe so now we explain what happened at the end of the year the carrying amount of the computer software is first was 30000 right and then since the company adopts the revaluation re model, we are explaining this. The fair value of 34,000. So what you calculate, you must uh, explain then in words. Is compared with the carrying amount of 30,000. Resulting in a revaluation re surplus of 4,000. So you explain this. And then you have to explain that you credit the revaluation re surplus. So the you can just stop the sentence maybe. This is too long. You can just put a full stop. You can say the revaluation re surplus amount is credited as credited as surplus to the asset revaluation re reserve and taken to other comprehensive income in the SOPL. You also need to mention about the accumulated amortization that needs to be eliminated, which is this one and this one. So those um, amortization that were there before the revaluation re date, amortization uh, of 20,000, which is before revaluation re date, is eliminated against the computer software. And finally, mention what is the carrying amount as at the 31st December after the revaluation. Re so it was at the revalued re amount of 34,000. And that was for four marks. Are you with me? Yes, All right. Yes, next, I yeah, next I one, we will proceed with the following one, the, sec the, the second part of it which asks you on this compute the surplus the surplus you have you are asked to again compute another surplus or deficit on revaluation re for the following year 31st december 2021 if the fair value of the computer software was 20000 so just now 31st december 2020 the fair value was 34 so after a year, how much is the carrying amount? And that carrying amount will be compared with 20,000. 20,000 here is fair value. Uh, if I was the one that teach, I will normally mention fair value 2. This one is fair value 1. Fair value 1. So let's do the working here. 
you ask to calculate the Okay, here. So here you have the information. So the carrying value is the one here. This one, you put here, 34,000. However, in that year, 31st December 2021, which is the following year, you provide amortization for this period. And you take the revalued amount, you divide by the remaining useful life. Remaining useful life now is three years because five minus two. Two years of amortization, five years useful life, so remaining useful life is three years. So you'll get 11 triple three. Then you take 34,000 minus 11 triple three, you got 22,667. You compare this with the fair value number two and you'll get a deficit on revaluation which is on second revaluation of 2667. That was the second revaluation was a deficit. First revaluation was a surplus. So if you are asked to do the journal entry, maybe in 2020 for the surplus or deficit, you of course you will debit the computer software you will credit ARR software. How much? 4 million? 4,000? 4, 4,000. 4, right. That is what happened. And you also need to go and debit accumulated amortization and you will credit the software. If the question asks you to do journal, accumulated amortization was 20,000. That was for that year. However, if you are doing 31st of December 21, you have surplus. So this is deficit. So this deficit, you do not need to go and debit to the shopper, but you will go and reverse again the previous surplus. So previously, you have 4K of surplus. So the, the, the deficit can be debited to the ARR software the whole thing, 2667, and you will credit to the software because a deficit, 2667, since the previous surplus was being reversed. So this is similar to MFRS, 116. And then you have another one to go and eliminate the accumulated amortization and credit the software. In case the question asks you to also provide a journal entry, but the accumulated amortization is 11 triple 3. 11 triple 3. So if you ask to do this, you should be able to do so as well. Meaning that not just explaining, but the journal entry. But take note that this is using the uh, same uh, rule of MFRS 116 on treatment of first revaluation. Here is first revaluation right here. First. Here is where you have your second revaluation okay that's it for that part now we go to the next section which is this part b part b uh, first january 2021 handkerchief started the development of its own brand for its new product so you can see here that they started the development of own brand so remember under the uh, mfrs 138. Uh, earlier I've mentioned that the internally generated intangible assets are not recognized, right? I've mentioned that. So let me just go back to that part again. Okay, I just need to find out where is it. Yeah. This one. Yeah. Okay. You can see that the own developed brand are not recognized. So basically, you cannot recognize the brand that was in the question because that falls under the categories of paragraph 48 and 49. Therefore, 
what we will do is you have to read that and then you can see that this will not be recognized. It does not meet the criteria. At the same time, the company spend uh, 100,000 to hire the consultant for the purpose. So they want to go and capitalize this. Development of the brand completed on 30th of June. And the new product was launched. The board of directors decided to treat this 100,000 as a brand and want to treat that as intangible asset and want to amortize over five years. So the board of directors shouldn't do that. That was against MFRS 138 rules. So you have to explain the accounting treatment for the brand. So if you have to explain accounting treatment, you can do similar to what you have here. Something like this, like number C here. So you can do something like number C here, but we have that in our answer here. So you can put here, the internally generated brand should not be recognized as intangible asset. Give the reason because MFRS 138 prohibits or does not allow the recognition of internally generated intangible asset as uh, the cost attributable to the brand cannot be measured reliably or you can use this sentence. Or... This one, you can use, it does not satisfy the recognition criteria or you can use that they cannot be distinguished from the cost of developing the business as a whole. So you can follow the format of answering here as well. And you need to mention that the cost can be, has to be recognized as an expense. You can do something similar to this because it is a similar question. Right? So that was the first part. Okay, I stop there. I will continue with the next uh, part, which is R&D in a separate uh, session. Okay, I will stop there first. Uh, so we will continue with R&D in a separate video. Thank you.